Rogue planets are among the most interesting objects in astronomy today. Free from the clutches of a star system, they roam the universe in darkness. Although they receive little to no energy from starlight, life could still form on these lost objects due to geothermal energy from the planet itself. For a more detailed explanation, see Kurtz Kazak's video. But how do you find these planets? If they emit no light and have no stars to tug on or block the light from, how do you detect their presence? In the end, these planets have one last property we can take advantage of, mass. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity is just the effect of matter bending space-time. Think of the universe as a sort of rubber sheet. When the sheet lies flat, objects follow straight line trajectories with no forces acting on them. When a large mass is placed in this space-time, however, Einstein tells us that it warps the fabric, similar to a heavy sphere placed on our sheet. Now, space-time is curved, and what used to be straight lines are now warped. When objects roll over the surface of the sheet now, they gravitate towards the mass and follow curved lines. According to Einstein, gravity is just the same mechanism working in our three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Space tells matter how to move, and matter tells space how to curve. However, matter is not the only player in this game. Light and energy are affected too. General relativity tells us that in a gravitational field, light follows a curved path as well. In other words, gravity pulls on light. It's a very small effect, but on large scales we can observe it. The Hubble Space Telescope has captured pictures of large galaxy clusters bending the light of galaxies behind them and distorting their images, an effect known as gravitational lensing. However, we can also observe this effect with small masses, say planets for instance. Exoplanetology, the study of planets outside our solar system, has come a long way since Pegasi 51b, the first exoplanet orbiting a typical star, was discovered in 1995. The field now boasts many methods for discovering exoplanets, and we can use one of them to find our rogue planets. Scientists refer to this technique as microlensing, since it takes advantage of gravitational lensing with small masses. In essence, astronomers wait for small, dim stars to pass in front of large, bright ones, so that the foreground star can focus the light of the background one. Although this image is too small to resolve for any of the distortion, the background star will appear brighter, since more of its light now reaches us, the observers. However, if the foreground star has a planet orbiting it, it too will act as a lens for the background star and create a tiny spike in brightness. Our instruments can measure this spike and tell us the mass and position of the exoplanet at the time of observation, based on the time and height of the spike. But we want to find rogue planets. How does microlensing help us there? It turns out you don't even need the foreground star for this technique to work. All you need is a dark collection of matter to act as a lens, and our rogue planets work perfectly for that. As such, astronomers can observe random, totally unexpected spikes in brightness from stars in the sky, and work backwards to find the mass of the lens. If it corresponds with the mass of a planet, we've found a rogue exoplanet. However, this technique is easier when the rogue planet has more mass, so we are more likely to observe a gas giant or brown dwarf act as a lens than a rocky planet like Earth. In fact, no rogue planets with masses smaller than that of Jupiter have been discovered or suspected, even with other exoplanet finding techniques. Still, as the technology and science of this field advance, so will the discoveries, and soon we may find ourselves a rogue friend in this dark universe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe, like, and share. The support really helps.